The Manila Bulletin also emphasizes the importance of the participation of our local government units. So it's not just of our partner companies who are very privileged to have with us this afternoon, but also we are here to also be in partnership with our LGUs because they too raise awareness and promote initiatives on sustainability. So today, I hope you're excited to find out the sustainability efforts made during the Pasig River Urban Development. Palakpakan naman dyan. Binuhay nila uli ang Pasig River. So please welcome landscape architect and environmental planner for the Pasig River Urban Development, Ms. Marion Comboy. Hi, Marion. Everybody, let's listen up to Ms. Marion Comboy. Thank you very much. All right. To Reverend Father Louis Coronel, USC Secretary General, esteemed guests, of course, uh, Mr. Philip Ku Unjeng, uh, the project head of Manila Bulletin Sustainability, other executives of Manila Bulletin, faculty of UST, our students, uh, participants from UST, a pleasant afternoon, everyone. So first off, I'm truly honored to be here on behalf of the Honorable Secretary Jose Rizalino Acuzar of the Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development. I have also here with me uh, the team of the Pasig Technical, uh, the lead architect, architect Carlo De Castro, as well as architect Martin Yambao. He's actually a Tomasian graduate. All right. So we would like to extend our tech, uh, heartfelt gratitude for the platform to share with you uh, the future planners of the Philippines about the Pasig River Urban Development. And our tagline for this is the Pasig Bigyang Buhay Muli. So, the Philippines Pasig River, it is a 25-kilometer stretch bisecting the Metro Manila. It has and always been a central spine as it holds immense historical and cultural significance as a vital waterway, which facilitates trade and transportation. And um, before expressways and vehicles, all of the goods and passengers were brought by ferries or boats, except, of course, uh, for the trains. So there's a long history of industrial and urban uses which the Pasig River has subjected ha and has left almost uh, irreversible effects. And rivers are, well, suppliers of water, agents of commerce, but ultimately unfortunate receptors of and conduits of wastes. So why do we need to clean the Pasig River? So in recent years, you may have seen this news. There was a study telling that the Philippines has contributed to about 36% of the plastic waste that end up in the world's oceans. So with the Pasig River identified as the top plastic pollution source, it was actually declared biologically dead in the 1990s. So as you can see, uh, the Pasig River uh, generates about 63,000 tons of plastic waste per year. So imagine that. And the importance here is we use Pasig River for major trade tourism routes connecting Manila Bay and Laguna Lake. So it transects uh, five cities, the Manila, Makati, Mandaluyong, Pasig, Taguig, and Taytay Rizal. So there is about 47 tributaries, and the challenge is there's severe pollution due to urbanization and industrialization. And of course, the settlements along the Pasig River in Manila Bay Area, and there's also a settlement of the ISFs, at uh, the Laguna de Bay. So they are close to the ecosystem of the Pasig River and continue to face threats. Uh, the, the water degradation and the waste generation that the Pasig River has. And of course, there's an urgent need to rehabilitate and enhance the quality of life along the banks of Pasig River, its tributaries, and surrounding communities. So what are the strategy that we have to come up towards sustainable Pasig River cleanup and urban development? So this is a timeline of the Pasig River rehabilitation efforts. There are restoration efforts 
And um, as you can see, we have um, government sectors and as well as private sectors that have led rehabilitation efforts. And la just last year, the president signed the executive order number 35, uh, July 25, 2003, that constitutes the Interagency Council for the Pasig River Urban Development with 15 member agencies. So monthly, they are convened to talk about and discuss how the Pasig River Urban Development will have sustainable efforts and develop the infrastructure. So it is actually spearheaded by the Office of the First Lady. And by mandate, the Interagency Council was tasked to synchronize and strengthen their efforts to accelerate the implementation of policies, programs, projects that aim to improve the water quality, restore the marine life, and develop the banks of the Pasig River, and of course, the surrounding communities. So since Pasig River is a free nautical highway, it is actually unimpeded. So the idea is to have basically a cycling and pedestrian pathway that connects all the different cities. So there's, the vision is to have connectivity, commercial viability, so there are pockets of economic development that boosts the tourism, local community, and generate new employment. So there is uh, overall productivity along the Pasig River. So, and of course, the community building. Here we have uh, to foster collective sense of responsibility for the environmental protection, cultivating a shared commitment to the well-being and sustainable development of the project. So it's important to reconnect because Pasig offers, of course, uh, more efficient transportation if you have visited or have tried the ferry stations. And part of the strategy is to adapt and update the PRISM or the Pasig River Integrated Strategic Master Plan. It was actually crafted by the UP Planades together with the PRCMO uh, the then uh, PRRC of the DNR. So this is actually a 15-year master plan. And um, there are planning imperatives. So this plan uh, has the key issues and pressures on the Pasig River system indicated, of course, the restoration framework strategies and potentials. So I'll share with you the strategies. Key strategy, strategy one is the sustainable catchment development. It was, it was actually mentioned earlier by Ms. Sheila, the catch, catchment. So here you can consider the watershed management, the ridge to reef, so from the ridges up to the reef systems. And the goal is actually to improve, of course, uh, the landscape connectivity and reduce the solid waste. So there is a key, there are key projects for the green infrastructure management, sustainable community facilities, of course, for the informal settlers, communities along the river. Next is we have the riparian and floodplain rehabilitation. So with this one, we tap uh, the MMDA with regards to the easement recovery program. Uh, we have to reclaim the easement so um, it is not uh, obstructed and to manage the vegetation. And of course, uh, there has to be urban renewal of the floodplain settlements. Third is the stream flow management. So the objective here is the flood control and stormwater management. Uh, actually, DNR has initiatives like the Pasig River Warriors uh, by the DNR Pasig River Coordination and Management Office. And um, let us note that there, is actu there are actually about 7,700 discharge points identified to be located in the Pasig River alone. So there are outflows of... Um, uh, gray waters directly to the Pasig River. And um, with this, as a result, parts of the metro region are badly affected by flooding, storms, which uh, the projection suggests could likely increase in intensity under the changing climate. 
And lastly, we have the water quality remediation and protection. So the objective here is to conserve and manage Pasig River freshwater resources. And there are actually monthly water quality monitoring integrated wastewater management. And through partnerships with the activities and engagements, first we have the Interagency Council with the Clean Rivers Organization and the Embassy of UAE. Uh, we have uh, also local and international private sectors uh, collaborating and uh, we have convergence. So this is one of the thrusts of the projects because we need different sectors to help regulate promote the environmental and sustainability practices. So recently, we also have the ISOCARP 49 Congress Technical River Tour for the uh, different uh, planners around the globe. As for the planning and design, we have also consulted um, design firms, private firms like Architect William of the WTA and landscape architect Paolo Alcazarin in terms of the master plan of the whole stretch of Pasig River. And as I have mentioned earlier, the First Lady is actually spearheading the Interagency Council. So recently, just last week, they held a meeting for the TWG of this Interagency Council uh, just to make sure that the development of the project is uh, going its full direction. And now I'm showing you the Pasig River segmentation. So we have nine segments, and currently we're at the Manila's old downtown in uh, the segment two. So may I ask if any of you have visited the project? Yes? All right, so... The showcase area or the Manila's old downtown. So this esplanade is actually the first showcase section. We call this now as the west section of the 25 kilometer Pasig River esplanade. So Secretary Akuzar wanted to make a point that the esplanade could be built and there are efforts uh, that uh, could make this rehabilitation happen. And it shows you the proof of concept and that we wanted to spark interest and ownership for the Pasig River as we Filipinos are all stakeholders of this uh, waterway. So this is the showcase, West Showcase area at the back of the Manila Post Office. So the idea is to have uh, unimpeded um, pathways, bikeways, so that by um, after the project is finished, you can travel. Imagine in 30 minutes from Mandela to Makati, you can bike. So there is accessibility, the connectivity. Showing you more photos of the project. And then here we have uh, under uh, bridge passage or transition area for every uh, bridges along the Pasig River just so that you don't have to go up the bridge and you won't be obstructed along the way. And this one is the latest inaugurated uh, phase of the showcase area. It has a view deck and um, the ground area is actually a commercial space and currently uh, we have this uh, PBBM pop-up fair that you can go to with your friends, classmates. You can uh, have some coffee or merienda while enjoying the scene, the sunset. So let's imagine a vibrant Pasig River once again flowing with life and vitality where communities thrive alongside a clean, sustainable waterway. So I hope we all support this and please join us as we um, explore more inno innovative rehabilitation efforts that not only restore the river's health but also inspire the sustainable future for the generations to come.
And with that, let me end with my opening tagline. Pasig bigyang buhay muli. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very, very much again, Ms. Marion. We hear the pride in your voice and it's very much well-deserved. Here's to making sure our rivers stay alive. Not only do we revive them, but they will stay alive for the future generations.